No more, no more. This educational video is intended to draw attention to the problem of facilitator cueing in a technique called spelling to communicate. The Claim In a movie called The Reason I Jump, a minimally speaking individual named Emma and her mother Donna sit on a park bench interacting with a letter board. They are using spelling to communicate, a variant of facilitated communication which the movie promotes. A narrator, who speaks words attributed to a 13-year-old boy subjected to FC, tells viewers, Please don't assume that every word I speak is what I intend to say. Making words with your mouth isn't the same as communication. Proponents of spelling to communicate believe the typed words aided by a facilitator are more reliable than an individual's independently spoken words. In addition, proponents believe the facilitators do not influence letter selection during the typing activity. Let's watch a clip from the movie. Please don't assume that every word I speak is what I intend to say. Making sounds with your mouth isn't the same thing as communication. We could finally. Where's the element? I Let E A C H O T H E. Uh, we find let each other. Come on! No more! Okay. Yeah, let's add the podcast now. Let's see. Oh. W. W. Oh. No more! Ha. No more! W. E. F. E. No more! T. We can finally tell each other how we felt. No more! The questions. The clip, though only about a minute long, is complicated and raises three main questions. First, are the communications independent and free from facilitator influence or control? Second, what does the mother think her daughter is communicating during the facilitated session? Third, might the daughter's verbal and nonverbal behaviors be communicating something other than what her facilitator thinks? Let's consider each question separately. Are the typed words free from facilitator control? Critics of facilitator-reliant techniques like spelling to communicate are concerned that facilitators cue their clients often without realizing it. The individuals subjected to these techniques may have some language, literacy, or academic skills. However, because facilitator cueing is integral to how these techniques work, questions of independent authorship arise. Let's examine the clip further with the sound off and a mask layer applied to aid in examining specific facilitator behaviors. In this example, it appears a facilitator is subtly, and probably non-consciously, moving the board in the air to aid in letter selection. A stable letter board would stay within the highlighted area. In this example, it appears the facilitator is providing hand signals 
to aid in letter selection. And in this example, it appears a facilitator maintains constant eye contact with the letter board and subtly gestures with her head to reinforce letter selection. What does the facilitator think was communicated? The following is a bit of the movie clip with the facilitator speaking. Note as she calls out letters, the facilitator ignores Emma's spoken utterances. W E F R E. No more. Is it me? T. We could finally tell each other how we felt. No more. We could finally tell each other how we felt. What might Emma's words and actions be communicating to her mother? First, let's examine Emma's attentiveness to the typing activity. In this example, she appears to be looking at and at times listening to the musical toy she holds in her hand. She appears capable of holding the toy still for the duration of the session and of tapping on it selectively without prompting by the facilitator. This behavior seems to rule out problems with motor control and calls into question why she is not holding the letter board herself or pointing to one on a stable surface. At times, Emma appears to have her eyes closed or is looking away from the letter board. Even when it appears she's attending, the gestures Emma makes with her right hand mimic those of her facilitators. Her selection of letters appears to be dependent on the facilitator's movements. And finally, what is Emma saying aloud throughout this whole session? The edited clip coming up highlights her spoken words. Some of what she says is quick and unintelligible. Still, her message comes across loud and clear. Note the tone of her voice. Does she sound relaxed or does she sound distressed. Communication. Let's go. 
No one. Hi. No one. W. E. And finally, watch Emma's body language and listen to her words when her mother finally stops the session. T, we could finally tell each other how we felt. No more. A couple unanswered questions. If, in a hypothetical and future situation, Emma was in a position of deciding whether a facilitator's personal advances were wanted or not, and they typed out together, we could finally tell each other how we felt. But Emma was saying, no more, no more. Which of the spoken or written communications would be considered legitimate? Also, was it intentional that Emma is positioned in the sun while her mother is in the shade? Squinting makes it appear she's deeply thinking about what she wants to type, even while disengaged from the activity. But could it simply be that she was uncomfortable because the sun was in her eyes? The Concern Proponents of all forms of FC, including spelling to communicate, believe the facilitated words are those of the individuals being subjected to it. They also believe that facilitators cannot cue their clients without physical touch. However, facilitator cueing, even if inadvertent, comes in many forms, such as movement of the letter board in the air, hand signals or other gestures, shifts in head or body position, facilitator control of the letter board, and, as demonstrated by this narrator, changes in vocal inflection at the start of sentences, when the voice generally goes up, or at the end of sentences, when the voice goes down. In addition, the client's verbal and nonverbal communications are often ignored. Even well-meaning facilitators may be influencing or controlling facilitated messages, building prompt dependency, and silencing the voices of individuals with profound communication difficulties when using facilitator-reliant techniques. The Science To date, there's no scientifically rigorous evidence to prove facilitated communication, spelling to communicate, rapid prompting method, or any of their variants produce independent communication. Controlled studies show that facilitators, not their clients, are producing the typed messages. Many organizations oppose the use of facilitator-reliant techniques. These include, but are not limited to, American Speech Language Hearing Association, American Association on Intellectual and Developmental Disabilities, American Psychological Association, Association for Behavior Analysis, Association for Science in Autism Treatment. FC is not science. For more information, visit our website at facilitatedcommunication.org.